breaking news. Key details of the Sony a7 IV have leaked, and they're enough to allow us to piece together the details of Sony's upcoming entry-level full-frame mirrorless camera, the follow-up to the revolutionary Sony a7 III that completely changed the camera industry. I'm going to tell you all about it and compare it to the Canon R6, but first I want to thank our sponsor, Squarespace. You need something better than simply social media. Your Instagram is filled with ads. It is not a good way to promote your work. Create your own website, get your own domain, take payments and appointments from clients, and get it all done in just a few minutes by going to squarespace.com slash Tony. Set up your website for free, and if you love it, the coupon code Tony will get you 10% off. Thanks for sponsoring us, Squarespace, and thank you to sonyalpharumors.com for providing this leaked information. Be sure to follow them. The biggest leaked detail is that the Sony a7 IV sensor is going to be 33 megapixels. That is a huge jump from the existing 24 megapixel a7 III, a good complement to Sony's new G Master lenses, which are incredibly sharp. It'll allow you to just create that much more detailed images. This also puts it ahead of cameras like the Canon EOS R and way ahead of the Canon EOS R6. It sets it apart from the growing crowd of full-frame cameras, including like the Nikon Z5 and the Panasonic S5 that have lower megapixel counts. So this is Sony positioning it higher up in the range for people who want more bigger prints, more detailed images. Another key differentiator is 5.5 stops of sensor stabilization. So Sony's steady shot technology was one of the first out there for the mirrorless cameras, but it's no longer the best. Canon and Nikon both regularly create better low light images by allowing you to handhold for longer times no matter what lens you have attached. This bigger number means that in low light with still subjects, you'll be able to produce cleaner images, more like medium format quality that you might expect. And it brings it closer to what Canon and Nikon have been doing. This also means we can expect to see some improvements probably through hardware upgrades rather than software upgrades to the rest of Sony's lineup as they catch up with the competition. Sony Alpha rumors suggest that there's going to be an October launch, but they put a question mark after that because after all, there is a chip shortage and nobody wants to launch a camera that they can't ship. But October would be great timing because this would be a popular holiday item if they can get the manufacturing lined up. I made a separate video about the chip shortage, but it's actually really a problem and a lot of items in the camera industry and other industries are not currently shipping. Now, I mentioned earlier that the 33 megapixels would tell us a lot about the camera. It tells us how Sony is positioning it. And I can infer a lot of other things from working closely with Sony and seeing the trends, as well as knowing how they tend to compete with the biggest competitor in the mirrorless full frame segment, Canon. I believe this new camera will have a flip screen. In fact, I believe the form factor is going to be almost indistinguishable from the Sony a7S III. Why would they create a flip screen when it's actually really controversial? Well, more and more creators need to be able to use their cameras for both stills and video, and the flip screen is actually really useful for video. I find it really useful for a lot of stills scenarios too, especially when sometimes you're doing product photography and you're working in front of the camera or you need to back the camera into a corner in order to get as far away from your subjects as possible. The flip screen definitely has some usability drawbacks, but overall it's more versatile and right now really very few professional people shoot stills and no video. Almost everybody need, uses their cameras for both purposes. And so that flip screen makes good business sense. So I think everybody agrees we'd rather see either a choice of screens or some sort of hybrid screen that could both tilt and flip. I believe it'll upgrade to 4K at 60 frames per second full width because this has become the new entry stakes in this segment. Cameras like the Panasonic S5 actually have quite a bit of crop when they do this. But we have the Canon R6 over here at $2,500 that offers 4K60 and has become our main video camera because it is so amazing. And Sony wants to have a lower price point camera for high-end vloggers and YouTubers. 
It'll have the new menu system from the Alpha One and the Sony A7S III, and that is a big upgrade from the older Sony cameras. It's still bad. S and Q settings. What does S and Q mean? No normal human knows what S and Q means, so let's hit the help button and see how helpful that is. Sets S and Q motion settings. Really, that's what S and Q settings does? The menus are still confusing and poorly named. There's still no good search feature. The touch interface doesn't work great, but it is a step up and it will be a welcome upgrade for anybody shooting with the Sony a7 III right now. It'll also incorporate the improved autofocus system that we saw in the Sony a7S III and the Sony Alpha One. It'll definitely have the animal eye autofocus system Though we don't find it quite as strong as the Canons, it is a big improvement. And when we compared the Sony a7 III to the Panasonic S5, the Panasonic actually had better autofocus. Clearly Sony is the, one of the leaders in mirrorless autofocus, but because the Sony a7 III is a 2018 camera release, it's just become a little bit outdated. And they've offered many firmware updates, but it is actually limited by the processing power, I believe. So putting a new chipset in there will allow it to just be that much better at autofocusing. So that'll make it more useful for things like sports and wildlife with long lenses where the current a7 III really struggles. Is it going to make much of a difference for portraits? Probably not. I definitely believe they will upgrade the viewfinder to something higher resolution. I don't think it's going to get the 9 million dot viewfinder from the Sony a7S III, but I think they'll upgrade it to the 3.6 million dot viewfinder that we saw on cameras like the Sony a7R III. It is good enough for most purposes. Is it shockingly beautiful and better than life like the Sony Alpha 1 and a7S III viewfinder? No, but it will be a noticeable upgrade for the large number of people who purchased the Sony a7 III. I also believe it'll use the card system from those two other Sony cameras, which is a dual UHS-2 card system that reverses, flips around, and allows you to put in CF Express Type A cards. These are not my favorite. They're rather expensive and overpriced for the capacities, and also the capacities are really limited. But Sony seems to be going all in on CF Express Type A. I just wish they would make more cards at different price points. I think the Sony a7 IV is going to sell for $2,500. That's actually a big hike from the Sony a7 III launch price at $2,000. But we believed in 2018 that the $2,000 price point was underpricing it. We believed the price at that time should have been $2,500, $2,600, and that Sony was making an aggressive move to attract DSLR full-frame shooters. Now Sony is more established. That move paid off. It seems like millions of photographers sold their DSLRs and bought the Sony a7 III along with Sony lenses. And I think selling the camera body cheap allowed Sony to actually make money on the lenses and other parts of their infrastructure. Just as evidence to how underpriced the Sony a7 III was, the Fujifilm X-H1 launched that same weekend in 2018. The a7 III launched for $2,000, the X-H1 launched for $1,900. Today, the Sony a7 III sells for $1,700, more than three years later. The X-H1 sells for $900. So the X-H1 price dropped by more than 50%, while the Sony a7 III price dropped by only 15%. Here's a quick roundup of the Sony lineup divided into four separate categories, general purpose, high resolution, sports, and video. The Sony a7 IV will be in the general purpose category, and it will be the most expensive of those general purpose cameras. Currently, that lineup starts with the ancient a7 II, priced at $1,000. I believe the a7 III is going to stay in Sony's lineup because it is still a capable camera, and the current price of $1,700 is pretty fair compared to the competition. Sony has an almost identical camera, the Sony a7C, which has the same guts in a smaller form factor and with that flip screen that Sony seems to like right now. So the Sony a7 IV will be the highest end of these general purpose hybrid stills and video cameras. They'll also have two cameras in their high resolution lineup, the Sony a7R III, which is priced very similarly at $2,300. So would you get the Sony a7 IV? 
with its 33 megapixels or the Sony a7R 3 with its 42 megapixels? Well, it depends on the type of shooting that you're doing. The Sony a7 IV is much more general purpose. It has a it'll have a far better autofocus system. It'll be able to uh, shoot video and vlogs by flipping the screen towards yourself, all things that the Sony a7R III can't do. But the Sony a7R III has an amazing sensor, probably better dynamic range, and definitely more resolution. At the $3,500 price point, we have the 60 megapixel Sony a7R IV, and then the Sony a7S III, which is video oriented. There are reasons that video shooters will still want to use the Sony a7R 3 because it has 4K at 120 frames per second, it has a better viewfinder, and it'll probably have a more powerful video autofocus system. But the main attractors for video shooters are going to be like the full HDMI port, the ability to output raw video, and the 4K at 120 frames per second. I believe the Sony a7 IV will be a very capable sports camera and will produce about 14 frames per second. They're gonna keep it somewhere below the 20 frames per second that the Sony a9 Mark II currently shoots at $4,500. It also will not have the same fast readout that the Sony a9 Mark II does, which means when shooting in low light, you're still gonna to have to deal with banding and rolling shutter, things that the Sony a9 Mark II really fixes. And then of course the Halo camera, my own personal shooting camera, the Sony Alpha 1 at $6,500, kind of does almost everything well with 8K video, 4K at 120 frames per second, a full 30 frames per second stills. It's just that it's much more expensive and of course it lacks that flip screen so it's not as versatile as the Sony a7 IV is going to be. When I put this together, I saw the weak link in Sony's full frame mirrorless lineup and that's the Sony a7 II at $1,000, which is their entry level camera. When you put that up against a Canon RP or Nikon Z5, those cameras are just all around better. The Sony a7 II just had terrible physical controls, really awful battery life. And while the features are there, sensor stabilization, resolution, image quality, that's all fine. The overall usability of the camera is bad and should feel bad about itself. I don't even think it has a touch screen. It was like, anyway, it just desperately needs to be updated. And so I predict the next camera we're gonna see after the Sony a7 IV is going to be the Sony a5. And make sure you subscribe to see the upcoming video about that because I think I know pretty precisely what it's going to be. I wanna take a second and compare the Sony a7 IV to the Canon R6 its main competitor. I think they're going to be priced the same at $2,500. And in fact, I think almost all the specs are going to be the same, like the same video specs, similar sensor stabilization specs. Here's how Sony markets the a7 IV to steal away the Canon R6 buyers. They're going to market that it's going to have far more detailed images because of the higher resolution sensor. Indeed, the R6 20 megapixel sensor is really low resolution. It's part of what allows it to be so fast, but Sony is going to give you 33 megapixels, way more detail with a similar frames per second readout, at least when shooting with the mechanical shutter. Sony currently has a much better mirrorless lens infrastructure. These have way more lenses than Canon has managed to release, but Canon has a much better user interface. For example, Canon lets you scrub through videos that you've recorded. They let you change settings by touching the screen, things that for some reason Sony just can't manage to do. Sony's also really gonna push that the Sony a7 IV will not overheat. That has been a key marketing differentiator, partly because of all the negative publicity that the Canon R6 got over its early overheating problems. A lot of those overheating problems have been resolved. Though we were filming with the R6 the other day and at the end of the shoot, it shut down and we had to wait a few minutes to be able to continue recording. I think another differentiator for Canon is gonna be that the Animal IAF is going to be better than the Sony, though the Sony will offer Animal IAF and I'm sure a lot of reviewers <laughs> won't agree with our assessment that the Canon tends to be a little more reliable. In the comments down below, I'd like to hear what you want from the Sony a7 IV. What would make you want to upgrade? Or are you just totally satisfied with the camera that you currently have? Before I leave, I wanna tell you one thing you can really do to improve your photography, and that's create a photography portfolio. Create a website with all of your best images that you can show to the world. Not only does this make you look better to everybody else out there, but it provides a place for you to see your own best work and the exercise of going through your images and creating a portfolio of 10 to 15 of your best pictures is such an important part of the career of a photographer because 
It allows you to see what you do right, but it also allows you to see weaknesses and it allows you to see opportunities for improvement. You'll look at one of your best pictures and see some little flaws in it and think, I can do a little bit better. And it's that that will motivate you to go out and take better pictures. I have benefited so much from having a Squarespace portfolio of my own. I suggest you try it out. Just go to squarespace.com slash Tony for free. Go through the process of setting up your portfolio. No charge and it will be really good for you. And it gives you like a high score to beat just by stating to the world, these are my best images. If you decide you want to keep that portfolio up, use the coupon code Tony and you'll get 10% off. Thanks Squarespace. Bye.